All right, so this is lesson 2.12. Uh, unit 2 is called derivatives. Lesson 12 is called derivatives of e to the power of x and natural log of x. This is the last lesson for this unit. Okay, we've kind of hinted at e to the power of x before. Um, so now we're going to unpack what that means. Um, we're also going to talk about just a quick refresher of what e is itself. Um, and then we'll find the derivative of e to the power of x and we'll find the derivative of the natural log of x using our derivative rules. Okay, so what is e? Um, e is like pi. It's just some transcendental number. It's a uh, it's a number that doesn't like the decimal doesn't end. It's non-repeating, non-terminating decimal. The um, and then it's it's one of those numbers that just kind of shows up in nature. So if you if you can see the spiral that shows up in all of these sh um, different things, uh, Fibonacci has a thing or two to say about this too. But um, we can find e in all of these spirals. So if you consider this spiral, and it goes by a couple names, um, if I take any any line segment of this spiral and I find one line segment between two different uh, parts of the spiral, and I divide that line segment by the next line segment towards the center, then I get a ratio of e. Or if I take this line, so if I take this line segment from uh, these two endpoints, and I divide it by the length of this line segment, I get e. And if I take this line segment and I divide it by the length of this line segment, I also get e. It's the same ratio. And I could do that with any any segment on any line of this graph. So e is like, uh, uh, rounds to about 2.718. Um, so uh, old dead white people are kind of coin for figuring this number out. Um, there's an old dead Italian guy who kind of developed some of the early concepts around E. There was an old German guy named Euler who kind of defined E for us a little more mathematically. And so uh, two definitions he gave for E using limit functions is the limit as x approaches infinity of 1 plus 1 over x to the power of x. And if this equation um, 1 plus 1 over x to the power of x looks kind of familiar this is a exponential growth or decay function and so the limit as x approaches infinity so if you play this out infinitely how much growth is possible is kind of what this is saying right here um, he also defined it as um, this limit function right here so very similar to the previous one but the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 plus x to the power of 1 over x well, that also equals e. And we could show this graphically. So the first one, uh, 1 plus x to the power of 1 over x. Is that the first one or the second one? Let's see here. That's the second one. Let's do the first one. So as x approaches infinity, the bottom one here, um, that would be f of x. So as x goes to infinity, so if I find f of a, and I make a equal to a really big number, we're going to see what this turns to. Um, you can kind of see our e number is forming here. So the limit as x approaches infinity of our f function equals 2.718. And so we're approximating e here. Now if I look at the second function, that is when, ooh, let's click off there, that is when uh, as x approaches 0, so as x approaches 0, 0 0.001, let me bring this out, our g of a function, down here we can see, oops, one button, um, as, as, as a approaches 0, our g of a is approaching 2.718 also, um, also E. So that's kind of a graphical uh, proof for those limit functions. Smart man, that Euler. Uh, okay, so if I want to show that the derivative of E to the power of X is itself E to the power of X. We kind of have a... You can Google this and get a more um, algebraic proof. What we're going to do is we're going to get to a certain point in the proof and then just go refer to the graph and see visually from the graph um, the final answer. So 
And that's because we don't really care about the super, you know, in-depth proof of this thing. But we just want to show that it actually doesn't make sense. So here we go. Um, if we want to find the derivative of e to the power of x, we can use our, our limit definition. So the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x, we would get e to the power of x plus h minus e to the power of x all over h. Well, uh, if you remember back from your grade 10 days, or grade 9 days, um, if we have an exponent and with a, with a, a, that's got an addition sign in it, we can split this up. So um, a to the power of, or x to the power of a plus b would be x to the power of a times x to the power of b. So we can write e to the power of x plus h as e to the power of x times e to the power of h, and then minus e to the power of x. Well, we have two terms in the numerator that share a common factor of e to the power of x, so we can pull that out of our function. So e to the power of x times e to the power of h minus a 1 over e h. So um, e is just a number. So what we know about constants is that we can take that constant and, and kind of pull it out of the limit and just multiply it by our final answer, and that's, that's allowable. Um, that's because e is a constant, not a variable. Um, so we can write this as e to the power of x times the limit as h approaches 0 of e to the power of h minus 1 over h. And so if this thing, uh, we can take this and shove this into a graph. We can graph e to the power of h minus 1 over h. We can graph this and we can look at what happens as h gets really close to 0. And we're going to see that it equals, it's going to approach 1. So let's take a look at that. So here's, if I use x instead of h, I get e to the power of x minus 1 over x. And if we look at from the left and from the right. So from the left, as we get really close to 0, it's going to be a 0 0.99999, so it's really close to 1. So from the left, we get close. The 0 is undefined, we knew that. Um, if we get really close to 0 from the right, we can see that we're getting really close to 1 as well. And if you look at the graph, we can kind of see, okay, yeah, this graph looks like it's, it's crossing the x-axis right at 1. And so, okay, visually, yes, as, as x approaches 0 of this guy, it's going to, the limit's going to approach 1. So we can look back at this graph and say, okay, the limit as h approaches 0 of e to the power of h minus 1 over h is going to approach 1. So we can write this as e to the power of x times 1, or just e to the power of x. And there we go. There's the derivative of e to the power of x it's itself. Now you know that. Don't forget that. The derivative of e to the power of x is e to the power of x. All right, understanding natural logs. So we talked about e. Let's talk about natural logs. Uh, you know what a log is? Um, a log is kind of the inverse of an exponential. So if I say natural log of x, I'm saying a log with the base b of e of x. Um, so let's take a look at that. So uh, um, that's saying, like, okay, so e to the power of what equals x. I guess you could think of it that way. If, if logs are still fuzzy for you, go back and review logs or come talk to me. We'll talk about it. All right, so how do you derive the natural log of x? Uh, the derivative of natural log of x is 1 over x. And so if we look at this thing, um, I am going to write out a, a more complete algebraic proof for this. Um, just because we can, and it's, it's kind of clean. So, um, in red here, I've got a little trick that makes this work. And so here we go. So if we use a limit definition for derivatives, we have the limit as h approaches 0 of the natural log of x plus h minus the natural log of x divided by h. Well, I can simplify this a little bit. Um, if I know my exponent rules, if I have um, two logs with the same base, so natural logs both have a base e, and then I'm taking the difference of them, I could write it as natural log of the first divided by the second, so a over b. So uh, we have the natural logs of x plus h divided by x right here. Now, if I take x plus h over x, I can split this into two fractions. x over x would equal 1, and then h over x I have right here. 
And so we have the natural log of 1 plus h over x divided by h. All right, now here's where we get fancy. Here's where we put our, our fancy poo on. So we have um, n. We're going to make up the letter n. It hasn't been in here previously. We're just going to make it up. n is going to be equal to h over x, which means that n times x would be h, which means that the reciprocals would also be equal. 1 over nx would equal 1 over h. And then that would also imply that if if h is approaching 0, so if, if we look at nx equals 0, if h is approaching 0, then nx is approaching 0, which means n has to also be approaching 0. Okay, so we can see that too. Now, if we take our limit function and, and, and write it, rewrite it in terms of n, so get rid of all the h's and replace them with n's, h approaches 0 would be n approaches 0 h over x would become n, and h itself would become nx, right there. Okay, and so we have the limit as n approaches 0 of the natural log of 1 plus n divided by nx. All right, next what we're going to do is we're going to take this fraction and write it as um, a product. So since nx is a denominator, we're going to say 1 over nx times the natural log of 1 plus n. So this guy turns right here. Now, the next log property we're going to use is uh, if you have a, a, a constant times the natural log of something, we could take that constant and move it as the exponent of that b value. And so our a is going to be 1 over nx, and our b is going to be 1 plus n. So we could write this as the natural log of 1 plus n to the power of 1 over nx. And I just went ahead and split up that, that power into a product of powers. So 1 over nx is equal to 1 over n times 1 over x. All right, and now I'm going to take that same log property and take that 1 over x part of the exponent and bring it back in front. Because if we're talking about n as our variable that's changing, so n's approaching 0, um, that means that x isn't changing. x is our constant in this case. So since it's a constant, we're just going to take the 1 over x and put it outside of the limit function and multiply it by our final answer. That leaves us with the limit as n approaches 0 of the natural log of 1 plus n to the power of 1 over n. And so this right here, this function, should look familiar. This function is the, is the function Euler showed us. So if we look back, um, 1 plus n to the power of 1 over n is, uh, where did that go? Right here. 1 plus x to the power of 1 over x. Just check the x's out and put in n, and we have the same thing. Yeah? Cool? Hey, thanks, Euler, for solving this problem for us. All right, so let's go back here. So we can replace this with e. And so we have... The natural log, or the limit of this stuff, is the natural log of e. And so we have 1 over x times the natural log of e. Well, the natural log of e is just 1. So really, we just have 1 over x. So there you have it. The derivative of natural log of x is just 1 over x. This one and e to the power of x, those are just these are just two derivatives that we need to um, just kind of have down. If you can't memorize it, Put it in your notes. Um, hopefully, it, after looking at the proofs, it kind of makes a little more sense. Um, I'm not going to ask you to prove these in this class, but we do need to know them. Okay, so um, here's some examples. So if I want to differentiate each of these equations, we have a, a chain rule going on. Okay, and so the inside function for the first two is just the exponents. And so the derivative of e to the power of anything is just itself. And then we're going to multiply it by the derivative of the inside. So the derivative of x squared plus 5x is 2x plus 5. And the second one, same thing, the derivative of e to the power of anything is itself times the derivative of the inside function. So the derivative of negative 2x squared is negative 4x. Now the natural log ones, the derivative of natural log is 1 over x. So the derivative of these two will be 1 over the inside function times the derivative of the inside function.
So in the first one, we have 1 over 3x to the power of 4 minus 5x squared, and we're multiplying it by the derivative of 12x to the power of 3 minus 10x. Same process for the last one. All right, so um, yeah, that's the wrong slide for that one. Takeaways for this lesson, um, we now know the derivatives of e to the power of x, and we know the derivatives of natural log of x, and we will need to know those to, for future stuff.